Responsible for some of rock's biggest hits, it's only Queen's Brian May. <laughs> a god amongst us. And that's not all. We've also got a man responsible for some of the biggest hits in comedy, including The Young Ones and Blackadder. The list goes on. It's Ben Elton. <laughs> This woman has soul, she has sass, and one impressive set of lungs. It's the incredible Paloma Faith. Yeah. <laughs> We're so excited. If you've got a question for Brian, Ben, or Paloma, or you just want to have your say today, then go to our website, email us at loose.women at itv.com, post on our Facebook page, or tweet us using the hashtag loosewomen. But make sure you get in touch by five past one today so we've got a chance to read all those out later on. Now, our next guest is one of the world's greatest ever guitarists. He's written some of the most memorable rock anthems of all time and as a member of Queen was part of a global phenomenon. Let's remind ourselves of Queen at the height of their fame. We were Who were those, those boys? Oh, that was a know. long time ago. How do you feel when you see that now? I feel kind of affectionate, you know, it's almost like it was a different life, you know, and it's wonderful to see Freddie in such wonderful condition, you know, oh, it was yeah. a peak yeah. of fitness. And, yeah. uh, it was great times, it was, you know, 1986 was the absolute pinnacle, you know, we did that stadium tour and I think we thought, oh, we can do this now, you know, but of course it was the last, it was to be the last tour ever. So, yeah. So it's, Brian, it's, when you look back at your long relationship with Freddie, Tell us that moment when you first met him. Ah, I first met him when he came to see us play. We were already a group, me and Roger, were in a group yeah. called Smile. And Freddie came down to see us, actually a lot, he came to see us a lot. He would always sit there very shy mm -hmm. and sort of like this. And, uh, and then he would come up, come up afterwards and say, no, but you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> you <know? laughs> you're great, you're wonderful, you know, you're fantastic. You're talking, but, you know, you should do this and you should do this and you should do more of a show and it should be, you should wear cosy. Oh. And we went... Who is this guy? You yeah. know I mean? <laughs> and then the group broke up and Freddie said, I can sing. And we went, really? Because we didn't really know, you know. And yeah. then we tried it out and by God, he could sing. And he played piano as well. So, and he played amazing piano. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had he so a great much energy, musician. didn't he? Yeah, incredible. It was the, the energy that he brought, which mm. brought all you out, I think, as well. Absolutely. He was, a, as well as being the perfect front man, he was kind of the perfect catalyst and mm. the perfect channel from a, from a band to an audience. and, and how do you does. feel, Brian, when you're singing those songs? Because you still perform them. Yeah. How does it make you feel? Does it remind you of Freddie? Yeah, always. You know, he's, he's always very much in mind. And I feel proud. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. proud of what we did together. And, and, you know, I have grieved a lot, you know, and it does strange things to you because it's like losing a family member. Yeah. But I'm very joyful at what he created. You know, yeah. his life was dedicated to just doing wonderful things and, and not only having a great time himself, but helping other people to have a great time. Yeah. So to me, you know, I feel joy, you know, and I love singing his songs. We do, I'm out with Kerry Ellis on tour at the moment. Yes. And, and we do a lesser known song by Freddie, which is called Life Is Real, which is really beautiful and soulful, mm. uh, very different from the flamboyant stuff. You and know, he so. wrote that one, too. He wrote that, it's a yeah. lovely well, song. Well, we talk much more about yeah. uh, your tour with Kerry Ellis and yeah. all the work that you're doing with her in a second, but uh, the Olympics closing ceremony was probably the last <laughs> time a lot of... I saw you yeah. on a huge yeah, stage. Yeah. Apparently it was the biggest audience ever. I, I just saw in the paper, isn't that right? Funny that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me. They all went for a cup of tea when I came on. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So, didn't, you, didn't you work, work with Jessie J? We like, did. Oh, <coughs> fabulous. How was that? It was great. Uh -huh. She's fantastic. She really is great. And I hadn't really worked with her before. I knew her before. I'd seen her at the um, TV Awards, actually. 
and had a good old chat. But no, she was great. She's a real pro. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't an easy spot to do for her. I was going to say, how do you connect with the audience in a place like an Olympic stadium? Well, you know, it was amazing because I followed that lovely little clip of Freddie, you know, and yeah. I went out there totally on my own without a safety net to do the solo bit. Oh. And, you know, it's an amazing sort of conquering fear mode, a bit like being on the palace roof, you know. Uh, yes. Yes. From, yes. From the back, I could see the whole stadium all lit up in sort of blues and greens and purples. And it was just, your stomach just does... The Do most you amazing still things. get nervous? Oh, yeah. Do you? Yeah, absolutely. You? Yeah, yeah, of course, you know, because, you know, it's live and real and dangerous and you could really, really mess up in front of a billion people. Or, or fall off. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose you could jump off <laughs> if you get it wrong. Freddie's mum watched, uh, uh, she must be very old now, Freddie's mum watched the Olympics, didn't she? She did, and she's with us a lot. We love Freddie's mum, Jess. Yeah. She's oh. just incredible. She's very much like Freddie. She has a wicked sense of humour. And she's just very alive and full of energy. Wonderful. She's Last she's year very was your 40th anniversary, wasn't it? For Queen. For Queen. Yes, it was. And so you went on tour? We did. And, um, well, we've done a bit of touring. Yeah, but, uh, we did a lot of stuff with Paul Rogers, as you know. And, and recently we did some stuff with Adam Lambert, who's an I amazing I love him. Guy. American Idol guy. He's an <gasps> incredible performer. Amazing. An amazing voice. Yeah, and I keep in touch with him. We tweet each other now, which is kind of <laughs> nice. You know, I've just discovered Twitter. Do you tweet? Oh, you? Yes. Yeah, we tweet. Yes, we tweet. What's your Twitter name? It's Did kind of dangerous. Dr. Brian May. Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, well, I am a doctor, he yeah. Is. I'm a doctor of astrophysics, yeah. Absolutely, astrophysics. Yeah. And you play yeah. guitar like that. That's unbelievable. Well, that... You're a doctor of astrophysics and you can play guitar the way yeah. you'd... Uh, well, unbelievable. You, you can't fix your funny toe, though. That's not... Can you no, not? unfortunately not. Good with ends, right? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, I want to ask you something about your guitar. You made Janet. your first one with your dad, yeah. didn't you? And what was it made from? Do you well, still play with that first It's still the guitar that I play, yeah. It's, it's my closest thing, really, yeah. It was made out of bits and pieces that were lying around. It was an old fireplace for a neck, which we chose chiselled out by hand, <laughs> bits of my mum's knitting needles and uh, old motorbike valve springs, and she's still with me. Is that what gives yeah. you that unique sound? Because it is a Brian May sound. Yeah. It is a certain thing. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody has a style and, and you can recognise their style, but the instrument is part of my style, yeah, and it, it's a little different from anything else. We make them now. I, I sell Brian May guitars. Um, so, you know, people can do that if they want. But, yeah, it, it's different from any other guitar, so just a little different. It, it was actually the first guitar electrically that was designed to feed back as opposed to not feed back, oh, which, right. is a, which is quite odd, really. You know, all these uh, Stratocasters and yeah. uh, Gibsons, they were all designed to stop the feedback which was getting in people's way. But, of course, people like Jeff Beck and Jimi Hendrix yeah. used the guitar wanted it, at sure. huge volume with yeah. feedback. So I wanted my guitar to do that. So my guitar is kind of a solid body, but it has acoustic pockets, so it, it picks up the, the vibration of the air. Okay. So it was a good theory, and it actually worked. I can't believe it. <laughs> Amazing. You can't beat a solid body, can you? No, no, no. Well, it has to sing. The guitar has to sing, so it has to be solid. Yeah. yeah. Well, Brian, we're going to hear lots more from you in the next part. And thank you so mm -hmm. much for joining us so far. Right, time for a breather before we carry on chatting to Brian and we hear music from Paloma Faith. Before that, check out which boy band of the moment are on next week's guest list. Let's go! One loose woman, five young men, the questions everyone wants answers to. You are the subject of quite a bit of naughty press. <laughs> Is there any truth in it and with who? The must-see interview, when Denise at One Direction. Next week, only on Loose Women. Welcome back to Thursday, Loose Women. I'm pleased to say Brian May is still with us. Yay, Yay. he's still here. You mentioned earlier about uh, touring with Kerry Ellis, the singer, yeah. um, for the Born Free charity. Just tell us a little That's bit right. about your work with her. Well, we went out to Africa um, to help Virginia McKenna in her work, um, yep. rescuing lions, actually, which was amazing, you know. And I really kind of connected with Virginia because she's been doing this for most of her life. She yeah. gave up a wonderful acting career just to, well, to look after animals. Well, the movie came out. It was almost after being 50 in movie. years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, so she became Joy Adamson, in a sense, mm. you know. And she's the most incredible woman. So both Kerry and I went out there and we worked with the workers out there, which was amazing. But I also took the guitar out and we did a few little kind of impromptu little tiny concerts in, in the jungle for the, the workers out there. <laughs> and it was very magical, sort of around the campfire. What a treat. Yeah, so we thought we'd like to bring this kind of atmosphere back to England. So that's what we're doing around the country. It's candlelit and very candle small. Lit. Yeah, it's Ooh, very really? kind of intimate and acoustic. Completely different from the huge production which we did last what time. What kind of venues are you going to play? 
Um, they're just meeting, they're about like four, between 400 and 1,000, but they're all like very nice and you're surrounded by people. And you really see people straight in the eyes, yeah. like playing in the living room, I love it. Well, what, so, what songs would you do there? Is it a completely different set? It's very different, yeah, it's a whole mixture. There's a few things from musical theatre which we've adapted, and there's a few rock songs, a couple of Queen songs. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of things which I've written for Kerry. Um, Kerry was in Wicked, wasn't she? And We Will Rock Amazingly you. so, yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. She was Beautiful. our first meet in... in, in oh, Rocky. She I created see. the role, okay. yeah. She's incredible. I mean, in the, in the early days, I was sort of helping her because I realised there was an incredible talent there, but she's become so incredible, and she has a huge fan club, you know, so... Yeah. It's, um, it's, I have to work really hard to keep up with her. <laughs> <laughs> She's just an, the most amazing interpreter and, of songs. Yeah. And you've got a single out now We do, the her. Born Free single, which we recorded yeah. for the benefit of Born Free. And it's because, um, at the moment, there's an, uh, there's an initiative to try and save the lion in Africa. It's almost unthinkable, but there may yeah. be no more lions in Africa yeah. by the time our grandchildren yeah. have grown up. So, you know, it's still legal to go out and shoot a line and bring the head back and put it on your wall. It's quite incredible. So there's a campaign going on at the moment which we're supporting to try and make it illegal to trophy hunt lions. Well, we wish you all the very best animals. with raising money for that. But can we just see a little bit of you and Kerry ah. in, uh, in, the Af in Africa? Born free and life is worth living but all after Matt Monroe's uh, it's one. It's very difficult. It's a great song, you know. A great song is a great song always, no matter, you know, you, you can do it in different Most ways. beautiful so. creatures in the film as well. I mean, you don't need supermodels oh. and all that when you've got that kind of... Those Cracks people starring in your video. Yeah, well, all these animals were in terrible conditions. They're all rescued from zoos and uh, terrible, you know, cages. And, you know, uh, now they're, they're in a wonderful place for the rest of their lives. They can be free. It, mm. it really, it's so emotional seeing this, mm. the wonderful work that Virginia does. Oh, well, we you. wish you all the best with that. Thank you. And with everything. And it's just a privilege to have you on, Lucy. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. You had my missus not long ago. Because we're going to yeah. hear from Polemma Faith in a second. <laughs> Brian May. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Because we're also joined by the...